Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about products that I have actually repurchased. Some of these are products that I've repurchased countless times. Some of them are makeup products that I've actually used up and then repurchased another one, which is very rare for makeup because usually, even if I really like a makeup product, by the time I use it all the way up, I'm probably ready to move on and try something new. But I have a couple makeup products that I've actually gone and repurchased a new one of. And I also wanted to open this up to makeup products that I've bought multiple shades of. Maybe I haven't fully used up one of these, but I like the formula so much that I went and bought more shades of it. And then I also have some body care, hair care, skin care, just a little bit of everything to talk about in this video. This video was inspired by a few different YouTubers that I watch, Judy, Jessica Braun, and Taylor Wynn. All of them I saw do similar videos recently, so I'm gonna link theirs down below where they talked about products that they've repurchased multiple times or just their kind of absolute staples that they will always have no matter what. So let's go ahead and get started with a sunscreen. So I do test a lot of sunscreens for my channel. Every year I like to do a big sunscreen review video where I test and rank a bunch of different face sunscreens. So it is kind of rare that I repurchase a sunscreen just because I always want to test new ones, but this is one that I actually did repurchase. This is the Everyday by Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen Lotion with SPF 30. I actually reviewed this sunscreen in last year's mineral sunscreen video, but I had the medium to deep shade. That was the only shade they had at the time. And I loved the formula. Of course, the shade was a little bit too dark for me, but it worked okay underneath makeup. Um, but I used that all the way up. And then I saw that they either launched or restocked on their lighter shade. This is the light to medium shade in this formula. And as soon as I saw that, I jumped on it and purchased it. So I will be including this one since it's a different shade in this year's sunscreen roundup, but it is the same formula. And I've actually grown to love it even more than I did in last year's video because last year I think I kind of ranked it. It was like in my top five, but it wasn't up there with like my number one because it was, I felt like it was a little bit too matte, but lately I've been getting more and more into a matte sunscreen. And this one in particular is something special because even though it has a matte finish, I find that it even works well on me when my skin is dry, like when I, even when I have dry patches. Something about it, it doesn't make my dry patches look worse. If anything, it kind of smooths over them and it just gives my skin this beautiful smooth canvas for makeup regardless of what my skin is going through. So even if you don't normally like a matte sunscreen, I think this is worth trying. And yeah, I've already used up a ton of this second tube. I probably will continue to repurchase it. I also really like that it's water resistant and Unsun is actually a black owned brand. So happy to support them. Yeah, I think this is a hidden gem. I think more people should be talking about this. I bought this on their website. This particular formula and shade is kind of hard to find anywhere else, but I don't mind just placing an order on their website. They used to have it at Target. I'm hoping they'll bring it back to Target at some point or at least some other retailers, but I think it's totally worth just buying straight from their website because it is really good and it's pretty affordable. I think it's like $17 for this, so uh, not a bad price at all. While we're on the topic of sunscreen, I also wanted to mention a body sunscreen that I've bought more than once. I think this is the third one of these that I've had over the years. This is the Paula's Choice Extra Care Non-Greasy Sunscreen with SPF 50. So I use this as a body sunscreen. They say you can also use it on the face. I just use it on the body. I don't really like to use chemical sunscreens on my face because I find that they irritate me and especially this one I found to especially sting my face but on the body it's amazing and this is actually a great value for a Paula's Choice product. It's under $20 for this five ounce bottle so if this does work for you on your face that is a really good deal for like a really big tube of sunscreen but this is just such an easy body sunscreen to use. It's very like liquidy and fluidy. I'll take out a little bit right now and show you. You can see it's got a nice kind of like milky liquidy texture and it just blends in so quickly and easily. And then it kind of just dries down and you can't even really feel it on your skin. So I am someone that I'm really picky about body sunscreens, especially like honestly even more picky than I am with face sunscreens because like, see, it's basically gone now. <laughs> like it doesn't even feel like it's there. But for some reason, body sunscreens, I just, I hate when they feel sticky or heavy or like when I can feel them like sticking to like, I don't know, my car door or my clothes. I feel like getting on my clothes. I hate that feeling. So I really need something lightweight that I can barely feel. And this is that sunscreen for me. It is also water resistant and it's SPF 50, so a good high SPF if you're gonna be outdoors. 
This is this is my my go-to body sunscreen. It's just so so good. My boyfriend loves it as well. Okay, I have a couple more skincare products and Paula's Choice products to talk about, but we'll get to those in a minute. I want to talk about some more makeup products now. All right, let's chat about these eyeliners. So I haven't actually used up any of these, but I, it's a formula that I liked so much that I went back and purchased multiple shades. These are the NYX Epic Wear Liner Sticks. I've been talking about these a lot lately, but this is the best eyeliner. These are liners that will actually set and dry down and then they will not budge. I have these swatches on the back of my hand that I swatched for these demo clips. And since then, that was probably about an hour ago, I washed my hands with like warm water and soap, made a point to like lather the back of my hands really well. They're still there. I mean, they've faded a tiny bit, but like, the liner is still there. So that I think just really goes to show how long wearing these are gonna be. I have four shades now. The shade I'm wearing today is the shade Rose Gold. This is such a pretty light metallic liner. I like to pop this in the waterline or I just like to smudge it along my lower lash line just to give a little bit of like soft shimmery definition. It's a really pretty shade. Also works well as an inner corner highlight. And then I recently picked up three more colorful shades. I have the shades Chill Blue, Periwinkle Pop, and Orange Zest. These are all just so fun for like spring and summer. Really excited to play around with these more. These are just great like colorful liners to pop in your waterline. If you want to play with color but you don't want to like, commit to like a super bold colorful eyeshadow look, you can just do like a relatively simple eye look and then throw one of these on your waterline. It just adds something a little bit unique and fun to the look without you having to really like go all in with a ton of color and they actually stay put in the waterline really well. I have never found an eyeliner that actually stays in my waterline for really any length of time, but these will, like there will still be some color in your waterline by the end of the day. Probably won't be like 100% of the color that was there at the beginning of the day, but it does last really well. So they're waterproof, they are budge proof, really just the best eyeliner pencils I think you could find. Bonus points that they're drugstore and they have a ton of fun colors too. So I love these. I know I've talked about them a lot lately, but I wanted to mention them because I it's one of those products that I like the formula so much, I bought multiple shades. So haven't used any of them up yet, but I still think that counts as like a repurchase product because I've repurchased multiple shades. All right, next I've got two mascaras that I've used up and repurchased. One of them is actually high-end, so we'll talk about that one first. This is the first high-end mascara that I've ever actually felt like was worth the money. It's the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. I have the mini here. This is one that I was actually able to try in PR a couple years ago, and I liked it so much that once I used it up, I did go ahead and purchase it myself. The reason why I think this is worth the money in the high-end price tag is that there's just, I don't think there's anything else quite like this at the drugstore, and I don't think this mascara is for everyone. It has a really unique brush. There's one side of the brush that honestly I don't really use. I, it, they say you can use that to kind of lift up your lashes, whatever. Um, but the other side has these two kind of rows of bristles, kind of like two combs that sort of taper in. And then at the tip you have some bristles kind of all around. This mascara, it's a little, you kind of have to get used to it at first because it is very dramatic. I actually just opened this tube today, used it for the first time. At first, it's a little bit tricky, but give it like a week or two, and then it really reaches its prime. I like a mascara that makes my lashes touch my brows. Like, I want my lashes to be long, dramatic, voluminous. I want it to look like I'm wearing false lashes, basically, because I don't really like wearing false lashes. And, I mean, look how long my lashes are today. And after like a week or two of using this, they'll look even better. <laughs> but, like I said, it is kind of a tricky formula to get used to. You'll see in the demo, it can clump your lashes together a little bit, but you can kind of work through them and kind of separate them a little bit with the brush. But I feel like the trade-off for me at least is worth it because it just gives them such intense volume that I just don't get from any other mascara. You can get the mini size for like 13 bucks. And I think I even saw the full size on sale around the holidays for like $11 once. So you can wait and get it for basically a drugstore price if you want to, but I just, I love this mascara so much that I did actually repurchase it and I, I don't typically buy high-end mascaras, so that is saying something. And then the other mascara is a drugstore one. This is just such a reliable drugstore mascara. Many of you, I'm sure, have owned this at one point or another in your life, but this is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara. I currently have it in the shade brown. In the past, I had it in black, and that is the shade that I would get again, or like very black. Whatever the blackest shade is, that's what I'll go for next. I've just, I think I've learned that brown mascaras just aren't really for me, but if you want a true brown mascara, 
get this one specifically in the shade brown. Not black brown, not whatever, but just brown. Because you can see it is a true brown. But like I said, I just like for my lashes to really stand out and I just feel like a brown mascara doesn't make them stand out as much as I want them to. So that's why I wouldn't get the brown shade again. But the formula of this is just so reliable. It doesn't smudge on me, which lately I've been having more and more trouble with mascaras smudging. This one does not. But this is just such a good, affordable, reliable mascara. If I'm ever like, let's say on vacation or something and I forgot to bring mascara or I lost my mascara, and I'm just, I need something that I know is gonna work, this is what I would pick up because number one, it's available pretty much any drugstore. It's pretty affordable and I know, I just know it's gonna look good on my lashes. It's not like as dramatic as the Lash Freak. I mean, I don't feel like any mascara really competes with that level of drama, but it gives me great length, great volume. It doesn't smudge or flake on me, no transfer. And I really like the brush. I generally do prefer like spiky rubber bristle brushes like this, but I like that the bristles are kind of short. So it's you're not gonna poke your eye out with this, but it does allow you to just get in between each lash. That is one that I have repurchased. I probably will repurchase it again in the future because it's just that good. So those are my two mascaras that I've actually repurchased. The other one I've repurchased, actually I almost forgot, was the Flower Lash Warrior. I'm only talking about products that I currently have in my collection in this video, so that's why I didn't officially include that in this video, but that is one that I did also repurchase more than once. Those are the only ones I can think of in recent years that I've repurchased. Let's move over to some more skincare. So I have two more Paula's Choice products that I've repurchased. So this is a cleanser. This is the Paula's Choice Softening Cream Cleanser from their Skin Recovery line. This is kind of my new holy grail cleanser. I love it so much that I bought the gigantic size because it was just a better value. This is 16 fluid ounces. Uh, I've been working on this bottle since I don't even know. Probably like the fall and I still have a ton left. So ever since I've been on Tretinoin, my skin has been very, very dry and this is pretty much the only cleanser I've tried that I know I can rely on to not only not irritate my skin, but it feels like it actually soothes my skin when it's a little bit irritated. It cleanses it at the same time. It's a non-foaming cream cleanser, but it does actually cleanse. I feel like there's some cream cleansers that's like, is it really cleaning my skin? But this one, I use this as my second cleanse, so I use my cleansing balm first to remove all my makeup, sunscreen, then I go in with this. My skin is clean afterwards, but it's not stripped, it's not dry, it's not irritated. I've found that since since going on Tretinoin, any foaming cleanser whatsoever, even if it has just like the tiniest bit of lather, it will irritate my skin. Like just, it, I just can't escape it. But this one does not, I can rely on it, and it just feels like a drink of water for my skin. You know, it just feels like it's, prepping my skin for all my other skincare, and it's just so soothing and great. It says it's for dry to very dry skin. I think any skin type could use this, but if you're sensitive or you're just looking for a good, really like nourishing cream cleanser, I highly recommend this. This is the second one that I've bought, and I will probably continue to repurchase it from here on out because unless I find something else, but I don't know that I will. I just don't feel like anything could really compare to this. Okay, another Paula's Choice product, and I feel like Paula's Choice is the skincare brand that I am the most loyal to. I've been buying from them since like 2013. It's very rare that I try a Paula's Choice product that I don't love. This is one that I have gone through countless bottles of. It's their 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. Probably their number one like cult favorite product. Everyone talks about this, everyone loves it for good reason. So this is a liquid BHA exfoliant. BHA meaning salicylic acid, so it's really good for acne, clogged pores, closed comedones, anything like that. At the moment, I'm not using this on my face. I haven't really been using any actives on my face other than tretinoin, just trying to let that work and do its thing. And I just, the more actives I incorporate, the more like irritated my skin gets. But I did recently open up this bottle that I had and start using it on my back because I was getting a lot of backne, which I hadn't had in a long time, but I actually just used this for the first time yesterday on my upper back and I kid you not, my upper back feels like it has already cleared up significantly. Like all of those active breakouts are no longer active. They're all kind of like diminishing. I can just feel them going away. It's, it's wild. It's very rare that you find a skincare product that actually works immediately and almost overnight like that. Like it, it's rare, but this is one of those products I will forever recommend if I ever do go back to, I'm sure I will eventually go back to using this on my face occasionally. This is the one I'll use. I just don't feel the need to try any others because I just know this one works. 
it's fragrance free it doesn't irritate my skin and polish choice they are you know they're pricey but they're definitely not as expensive as some high-end skincare brands and you can almost always wait for like a good 20% off sale and get their products for like a much more reasonable like close to drugstore price so I don't even know how many bottles of this I've gone through at this point, probably at least six. Well, I should say I've gone through this and quite a few of their blue bottle BHA liquids in their clear line. Very similar, almost interchangeable. I actually, I, I just remembered in the past, I, I did slightly prefer the one in the blue bottle for acne for my face, but I can honestly go either way. I just wanted to mention that though. The next product I want to talk about is a deodorant. This out of all these products is the one I think I've repurchased the most. I have probably bought like 15 of these over the years. This is the only deodorant I buy. It's the Certain Dry Everyday Strength Clinical Solid. It's just their kind of most basic antiperspirant deodorant. Certain Dry is one of the very few cruelty-free brands that actually makes antiperspirant deodorants and not just natural deodorants. I'm not a natural deodorant kind of person. I want a traditional product that's going to keep me from sweating, keep me from stinking. I can just always rely on this. This is actually a brand new one. I am almost out of my last stick of this, but I apply just a couple of like thin swipes of this at the beginning of the day. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. It keeps me dry. It keeps me from getting smelly. It's just, it, it does what a deodorant is supposed to do. If you're looking for a good like traditional antiperspirant deodorant. If you watch my empties videos, you've probably seen me talk about this countless times at this point, but but in case you haven't, I feel like I need to give everyone a PSA. Like this is amazing. You can get it at Walgreens, very easy to find. But specifically the everyday strength, they've got a few that all look kind of similar. This is the one. I need to like reapply. I just took a break to eat a snack and now I need to reapply. My right, lipstick. Speaking of lipstick, I wanted to talk about a lipstick formula that I have bought multiple shades of. <laughs> this is the e.l.f. Seriously Satin line of lipsticks. So this is another one that I haven't actually used one of these up yet, but I like the formula so much that I've bought multiple shades. So I have the shades Cream, which is the first one I ever bought. It's a nice like light pink nude. Um, that's a good like center of the lip shade. Nectar is the one that I have on now. This is such a unique color. I usually don't like warm, medium toned nudes like this, but this one, there's just something special about this shade where it's not too brown. It's like, it's peachy, it's a little orangey, almost like a light terracotta nude. And I just find it super flattering. I like it in the fall especially, or like late summer into fall. But I feel like it also works well in the spring because it's got kind of a peachiness to it that's really pretty. And then the other shade I have is Persimmon, which is a bright orange color. So the great thing about these, first of all, they're $3 each. So just about as affordable as you can get. The formula is so nice. You can see it on my lips now. It's got a nice kind of comfortable satin finish. It's not super flat matte, but it's not glossy either, just kind of somewhere in between. And it's just one of those formulas that I can rely on. And I also like that like for colors like persimmons, like bright orange, it's nice to try out colors that you're not sure about or that you know you're not gonna wear very often. It's only $3, so you can kind of experiment with different shades without breaking the bank. The only downside is the packaging. I had to actually tape my cream shade because it was getting ready to crack and like completely fall apart and I wanted to still be able to know that the cap was going to stay on. So you may just want to preemptively put like a strip of tape all the way around this um, bottom part of the cap. You could even get some cute washi tape, you know, make it cute if you want to, but I feel like for three dollars I don't mind. I love these lipsticks and I could definitely see myself continuing to buy more and more shades in the future. And then another e.l.f. lip product that I've bought multiple shades of is their Lip Plumping Gloss. This is one of my favorite gloss formulas. Six dollars each, so not as cheap as the Seriously Satin, but Still really good drugstore price. If you can get them on sale, you might even be able to get them for like three or four dollars. I have the shades Pink Cosmo and Champagne Glam. They're not super sticky, but they're also, they're gonna stick around on your lips at the same time. Like they're not gonna just sink into your lips in five minutes and then you feel like you have to reapply super often. I love Pink Cosmo for just like a nice milky pink gloss. I either wear it on its own or I top you know, literally any nude color with this. And then Champagne Glam is this beautiful, it, it is shimmery, so if you don't like shimmer, I mean actually they both do have some shimmer. The Pink Cosmo shimmer is a much finer, almost just like pearlescent glow. Champagne Glam, it does have some like shimmer particles to it, but they're so pretty. It's almost this kind of like iridescent duochrome kind of 
sparkle to it. It's not gonna look super frosty and glittery on your lips at all, but it just gives your lips this gorgeous shine. It's beautiful as a topper or on its own again. So yeah, one of my go-to lip gloss formulas. I have love it so much, I've already bought another shade. <laughs> While we're on the topic of e.l.f., I wanted to mention a product from e.l.f. that I feel like does not get enough praise from me, but it deserves it because it's been an old standby for years. This is the e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. That's what it's called, the eyeshadow brush. It retails for $2. Used to be $1, but hey, $2 for an eyeshadow brush is still pretty good. And I've had both of these for years. They're, they've held up great. And this is their cheap, some of their black handle brushes will, the ferro will come loose after a few years. These, I mean, knock on wood, but so far the ferro has stayed on really snug. This one I've probably had for 10 years at this point. I think I bought this at Big Lots when I was like first getting into makeup. Probably bought this in 2014. So maybe not a full 10 years, but like eight years. I use these basically every day as my shader brush. Sometimes I'll use a different brush or I'll use my finger, but when I'm using a shader brush, this is typically what I reach for. I, it, it's just reliable, it works well. You know, I feel like I don't need anything super fancy for that purpose, but this is my go-to. Most brushes, I don't feel the need to own two of the same exact brush, but this is one that I, I actually went back and bought another one because I use it that often, so. Highly recommend, two bucks. Also, speaking of these inexpensive products, I really wanna do a video soon of like actually affordable makeup, $3 and under, which I know is getting harder and harder to find, but that's kind of why I wanna do it because it is getting hard. Like these e.l.f. seriously satin lipsticks would probably be included, but I'm on the hunt for more like super, super affordable makeup. So if you have any favorite brands or favorite products that are $3 and under, like, I know, I know that's a, a tall order, but let me know because I'm kind of planning for that video right now. All right, we're nearing the end here, but I wanted to talk about a hair product that I've purchased countless times now. I discovered this almost a year ago, and I think this is probably the fourth bottle that I've owned. The Garnier Whole Blends Oat Delicacy Gentle Shampoo. I know I've turned so many of you guys onto this shampoo. $4. You can get it at Walgreens, Kroger. Basically anywhere that sells shampoo, you can probably find this one. For me, this is a combination of the affordable price, the scent, the scent of this is just so comforting and I just can't imagine anyone not liking this scent. Like it's just, it's clean, it's kind of creamy, comforting. And the way that this makes my hair feel, so they say it's, this is for fine to normal hair. I do have fine hair and it's also specifically meant for like sensitive scalps, which I have. and. I just, I keep finding myself going back to this one. I've tried a few other shampoos, like I did recently talk about the Acure Daily Workout Shampoo, which I found really similar to this one, but it is more expensive. And I felt like after a while of using that one, my scalp was starting to get a little bit irritated again. So I went back to this because I just feel like I can count on this to just keep my scalp calm somehow. Like I'm definitely prone to kind of like an itchy scalp. I do get like dandruff and just build up sometimes and this just keeps everything calm and under control. And I just love it. I just love it so much. I wish they would sell a jumbo size of this because I would totally buy it. My boyfriend and I both use it so we go through it kind of quickly. I know they make a shampoo bar of this and I was thinking about buying it, but for one thing, I think I can only get it on Amazon. It is more expensive and a few people told me that it like ruined their hair. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stick to the liquid, um, just traditional shampoo of this, but I love it so much. Even if you don't have a sensitive scalp, even if you don't have fine hair, I think it's still worth trying because, I don't know, there's, there's something special about this and it's so affordable too. If you don't end up liking it, you could use it up as like a body wash or something and you only spent $4. So <laughs> yeah, so good, had to mention. All right, I think this is the final product I have to talk about today, and this is a body care product from Giovanni. This is the Giovanni Hot Chocolate Sugar Scrub. I love body scrubs. I know they're not like a necessary product, but they're just one of those treat myself products that I love to have in my shower, and I like to try different brands and different different ones, but this is the one that I always go back to because number one, it's pretty affordable, and it's just the best one. Um, it smells like hot chocolate, first of all, like it smells good enough to eat. You gotta be careful with this. Like, don't give this to a four-year-old because I bet they would just eat it because it literally smells like something you could eat. Um, the texture is perfection. I haven't dipped into this one yet because I'm almost done with my other one. Once that one is used up, 
this is, I, I cannot wait to start using this. It's got like the perfect amount of grit to it. It's not too gritty where it's like too thick and hard to work with, but it just spreads, glides right over your skin, and then it rinses off really easily. It doesn't make a huge mess in your shower. It just rinses down the drain. It just does what a scrub is supposed to do. It's no fuss, and it's enjoyable to use, which is exactly what I'm looking for, <laughs> obviously. So yeah, I just, I love this. I get it on iHerb or other places sell it too, but that's where I typically buy it. Um, if you haven't tried this and you're a body scrub kind of person, or even if you're not a body scrub kind of person, this might convert you because, oh, it's just so good. It smells incredible. Just normally I'm the kind of person that I like to try different scents of things, but I, I just, I never get tired of this scent. I'm happy to have just this one. Oh, one last product I wanted to talk about. This is super basic, super simple, but that's also kind of the point of this video. These are just those basic staple products that I'm always repurchasing. This is the Ulta Beauty Maximum Strength Nail Polish Remover. So this is just cheap. It's a big bottle. Ulta Beauty brand is cruelty free. And I know acetone, like pure acetone, is probably not the best thing for your nails or your skin, whatever. But it's also just the most effective at removing nail polish. Like it removes nail polish in a second. It's it's so easy. I feel like other like acetone free nail polish removers, I just spend, have to spend so long scrubbing at my nails. Not with this one. I just hold the cotton ball on there. Boom. It's it's gone in like two seconds. So this is at least my second bottle of this. Pretty sure. So those are all the products that I have repurchased. Like actually repurchased. I know in empties videos a lot of the time I say, you know, I would repurchase this. I wouldn't repurchase this. Sometimes even if it's a product I would consider repurchasing, I just maybe haven't gotten around to it for one reason or another. But these are the products that I have actually repurchased. Or in some cases I have purchased multiple different shades of it because I love the formula so much for some of these makeup things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and just hearing about some of my like all-time staple holy grail products. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I'd love to see you again soon. I upload four videos a week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.